Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Mary and here we talk all things houseplants with a bit more emphasis on Hoyas. So today we're gonna have a mini Hoya haul. Um, April is my birthday month so I have decided that I will be getting some new Hoyas. Truth to be told Two of the six Hoyas I'm going to show you today, I got last March, uh, but as I was away for almost a month, um, I have decided to show all of them together. There is a small hiccup though. I have entrusted the person to water all my plants and my Hoyas, of course, while I was away. and. The first one that I'm going to show you has suffered a little bit. I'm not sure if I will be able to save it, but here goes nothing. So first one is a Hoya that some people are looking for a while. Um, it used to be quite popular in the past, it still is, and it trails very nicely. And it is Hoya Linearis. Again, what I am going to show you is not the best sample of the species. So, this is the Linearis, and as you can see, it's quickly dying. It has very nice leaves. Uh, originally, when I was seeing pictures of Hoya Linearis online, I was not really thrilled. I was thinking that, okay, why do people, you know, care about this Hoya so much? It's nothing special but after I got my hands to it I really fell in love um, as you can see yeah, from here it's like because I did not have time to move any of the Hoyas from moss to pond and I could not even acclimate them so it's not looking at its best this is why I took some cuttings I have the cuttings here rooting in water not all of them will survive, I'm pretty sure about it, but if I can at least get one or two to survive, I would be more than happy because I can start from scratch the plant. Um, I think that it was left to dry for a long time and then it got dry rot and then consequently root rot. I'm not sure, but I will still probably, I will take it out of the moss and see the condition of the roots i'm pretty sure that they are dead and um, so i will reach up and rip rope with the hope that i will be able to salvage this the second one that i got surprisingly <laughs> survived so i got these two together the second one is the bella inner variegated you can see the small leaves here it's also called Louis Boy or Louis Bois. I'm so sorry for slaughtering the name. But yeah, there it goes. So when I got this one, um, you can see it's, it has some new growth already. I was not expecting it to grow that much. When I got it, it was like up to here. So all these are new growth in the last month. And here as well, these four leaves are also new growth. It has a point where it's not variegated so maybe I will just chop this and let the rest continue growing I'm not sure remains to be seen but it will be a nice addition to my outer variegated Bella and to be honest although they say that the variegated versions are in general slow growers this one is not uh, I see already new growth and it's still in Sphancnumos as you can see here but yeah, hopefully I will move it to semi-hydro this one as well so it, I will be seeing even more new growth the next four I got like a couple of days ago I haven't even done the sulfur treatment on them yet and um, the first one uh, I was looking for a while for this one is a Hoya Colina IR26 is the other name I'm not so sure when the supplier told me it's not my standard supplier but she has also some amazing plants so you can see here 
the only leaf that actually resembles to a colina is this one because you can see the small splash I'm not sure if it can focus properly the rest of the leaves are a bit different so you see here the leaf or the two leaves three leaves are a bit more like a circle the others are a bit pointier and this is one of the things that you should always note with Hoyas you are never sure um, of the Hoya unless it comes of course tagged properly um, until it, it blooms um, for many Hoyas that you're not sure about wait till they bloom and then you will be able to identify the species much easier so the next one is a Hoya that I was looking for also a very long time and it's Hoya Tsinkungensis and you can see it here up until recently um, I was saying that okay, I'm never gonna get small leaf Hoyas again I'm struggling with them they don't do well on me I kill them all the time um, as it turns out this is not the case so the lacunosa that I was chopping and propping like crazy I has took all of the cuttings took so now I have <laughs> two plants plus several cuttings that I will probably replant and make a bushier plant my Curtisii which uh, was also struggling is also now growing quite a bit and I think you know I have to thank spring for that because okay first of all I did not kill the plants and secondly they are growing so Tsinkugensis here has even smaller leaves than Curtisii I was not sure if I, there are many Hoyas with smaller leaves than Curtisii but this is for sure one of them and the leaves are very delicate they're a bit fuzzy they are dark green and I really love the fact that they grow so symmetrically like all Hoyas do apparently but sometimes in smaller leaf Hoyas you see you know one leaf and then a node and then another leaf and then a node and then two leaves or something like that this particular is very symmetrical and I, I quite like this I can't wait for it to grow I will also be moving this to pond actually all the Hoyas that I'm gonna show you today are epiphytes so I will be moving them from the moss the, the dreaded moss to pond um, after I do the sulfur treatment on them the next one and I'm quite happy for this one because it was also on my wish list um, but I wasn't sure if I would be able to find such a big plant is Hoya endawensis and this is the one you see here it's quite a full plant so endawensis as the name suggests comes from Endau Romping National Park in Malaysia it's an epiphytic uh, Hoya as I told you and the leaves you can see the leaves are quite ruffled but they are quite shiny as well so they are they are quite glossy um, it resembles to Cania cumariana uh, but the big difference is that Cania cumariana has fuzzy leaves I do not have this one but this one and the Wensis has glossy leaves so the leaves are quite thick they are a bit succulent like and you see all the roughness on the leaves it's it's an amazing plant to own and you can see here the new growth as well it grows quite nicely already so hopefully after i move this i will continue to have success with this one well it just dropped so <clears throat> okay and the last one <laughs> The last one, okay. So, for the last one, I need to say a few things. I have promised to myself in the past that I would never buy a single node, single leaf cutting. But, and that, that is a big but, I found this one, which I'm not sure how many can recognize. 
This is a Sulawesiana. So I was looking for this particular Hoya for a long time. It's not easy to find this and if you do find them, they are super expensive. They have the most fuzziest flowers you can possibly imagine. I mean, if you think Caudata has fuzzy flowers, wait till you see these flowers. So I found this from the same supplier. She only had a cutting which has just started to root and she's uh, rooting it in water, same as I normally do for my cuttings. So when I saw it, it was not at a very steep price, it was not cheap either, but it was like, okay, I need to have this because if I don't get this now, I will never be able to get this Hoya. So this is the Sulawesiana or let's say the leaf of Sulawesiana that I got. I, I'm a bit worried to take it out of what I have it here because I'm afraid that I might damage the roots. So I prefer to just try to you like that for the time being and hopefully in the future you will be getting a proper photo or a proper video once it establishes and I move it to some hydro as well. Um, the, the flowers, as I mentioned, they're super fuzzy. They come with a burgundy color corona. And um, this Hoya in particular comes from Sulawesi in, in Indonesia, as the name suggests as well. And I have read somewhere, but I'm not really sure if this is accurate, that it grows best in bark. Um, for those more familiar with Hoya should know that, you know, they are epiphytes, okay? They can grow in bark, they can grow in moss, they can grow in orchid mix, they can grow in pond, whatever. I have um, actually asked a few people on Facebook groups, on Hoya Facebook groups, and they have told me that quite a few of them are growing their Sulawesianas in pond, in semi-hydro. So I will dare to put it in uh, semi-hydro as well and I hope it will grow okay. So, these are all the new Hoyas. Um, I will give you some progress, especially on my linearis, because I'm not sure why it's dying on me. It's, it, was, it was growing so nicely when I first got it for the first one week, but then uh, I was back and, you know, I got like all these rotted stems. But this is not the photo I want to end my video with. So I prefer to show you my lovely endowensis. Again, guys, I think if you can get your hands in one of those, just get them. They are, they are amazing plants. They grow quite easily. And if you do like all this ruffled and a bit, let's say, prehistoric look, Hoyas. I'm sure you're gonna love this one. It's not fuzzy, it's glossy, but still it's worth every single penny. So that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. If you did like the video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.